doing um, a landscape today using the influence of Louise Elhart. Louise Elhart was pretty much before her time period and she did things like paper cutouts and mixed media. Um, she was mostly known for, as a children book, book illustrator, but she did lots of other artwork as well. Um, this is Feathers for Lunch and it's just about a cat that wants to get outside and when he does get outside, he's wearing a bell, all he catches are feathers. So Louise was very much into the environment <clears throat> and learning about what was around you in the environment. So her illustrations are beautiful. There's cutouts, but she uses watercolor in an interesting way and plays with those different things. You can see here in this bird, the tail feather and the wing are cut out. Um, and you can do that any way you would like to, but let's take a look at some of her work, okay? And she always goes ahead and names all the critters in the book, like American Robin. She lets you know what the names are. Here's the Blue Jay and the Cardinal. And you can see how in here even the colors kind of bleed into each other. She lets that happen. So she does a really cool um, piece like that. Here's the red winged black bird. Again, she's naming all of the creatures. So today we're gonna to get started. We're gonna have a background, which is gonna be the sky, a middle ground, which is gonna be trees, and the foreground, which is gonna consist of birds, and it'll be birds of your choice. Now, <clears throat> if you're working at home, and you don't have quite the same materials, that's okay. You know, I tell you to use your creativity. Think of what you could use. Like if you don't have watercolors, maybe you can rip up pieces of a magazine or wrapping paper to create a blue kind of background for your sky. Um, some of you did a great job last year with kind of dipping some tissues in some um, colors and gluing them down to create your background. It could be anything like that. So again, if you don't have quite the proper supplies, it's kind of like cooking. You can substitute things. So right now, I am going to go ahead, and you got to move quickly because we're using watercolor here. And I have my very old set of watercolors here. And I'm going to start with blue. I'm getting plenty of the color on my brush. And I'm going to go ahead and lay my blue down as quickly as I can, spreading that out. And you don't want to stop because you don't want it to dry while you're working on it. I'm going to add a little bit of red to my blue so that I get more of a purple color here. I don't know, it must be something on the sheet of paper there. It's kind of repelling the watercolor. Sometimes if you get a little bit of grease if you're wearing hand lotion or something that can happen. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead down here and add my colors. And great thing about watercolor is you can make the color slide in different directions and kind of let things happen to it. Now the next thing you can do is a little trick. And this trick is I'm going to take some salt. I have kosher salt here, which has a slightly bigger grain to it. Probably poured out a little too much here. I'll take about half of that. Okay, so this is my kosher salt. You can see it's a bigger grain. And I'm not going to talk too much. I'm going to get it on here because I don't want my watercolor to dry in the meantime. So if I spread out that salt, if you have regular table salt, that'll work too. I like the bigger grains. Um, the reason I'm doing this is I want to create kind of a background that looks like it might be snowing. And you could actually add snow on the front. Here's one that's drying, and you can see that the um, crystals of the salt are beginning to absorb some of that color. Here's another one that is finished where it absorbs some of the color. And you can see that it almost looks like snowflakes there. Okay, so while you're waiting for that to dry, we can get started on the trees. And the trees are fun and they're easy. Um, let's 
pretty hard to go wrong on them. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take another piece of paper and I might use the edge of this cardboard as kind of my ruler, or if you have a ruler, you can use that. If your table area is wet, you might wanna replace it with a drier piece of paper. It's up to you. Okay. I'm gonna get a ruler. And a pencil. And I'm going to start making my trees. And to do that, trees, if they're gonna look like they're in perspective, are thicker as they get towards the ground and narrower as they get up. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a line like that. And I can cut all of these out. You're probably not gonna use all of them, but I would suggest working with these and at least painting them and choosing your favorite ones. I think that's a better way to work. So I'm making sure that the bottom is narrow, is I'm going in different directions. You have one side that's narrow and one side that's thicker. That's what you want. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out. And you don't have to be too careful about this. You have to have them in your piece in order for you to get credit full credit, but how you go about it might be a little bit different, okay? So I've got these pieces here, and I want to make them look like um, like birch trees, white birch trees. And white birch trees have black on them, um, and we're going to do that using a piece of cardboard. And some tempera paint. So this part is kind of fun. And it might seem kind of weird at first, but they end up looking good. So I'm gonna flip this one over. Oh no, that's fine like that, okay. Got my temper paint here. You don't need much, don't waste. Okay, and kind of spread that around. And I'm gonna dip my piece of cardboard in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make kind of my lines across from my birch tree. And they can get kind of neat if the lines dry out a little bit. They look a little bit more natural. I'm gonna go ahead and flip another one over. And you can see it doesn't take long to kind of gather these up. Go from the other side here. And there's another birch tree. Goes pretty quick. Okay, one last tree to do. I'm using up most of my paint here as best I can. And the nice thing is when you use up all that paint like that, um, if you're using paper cups, you can throw out the excess um, or you can just wipe it down with a paper towel and that works too. Cleanup is easy that way. Okay. And we want to get as much time for creating and less time for cleanup. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this piece of cardboard away and maybe wipe out my dish here so cleanup isn't. Okay, so we've got all our trees and what you're gonna do next is you are gonna decide how you're gonna glue these down on here. Now you could put so I'm going to take these trees, and I have some here that are a little bit drier already. So they're still kind of a little damp here, so I can take a few. I'm going to start with some dry ones. Give myself some room to work. Okay, so here is my paper. I've got two dry trees here, and I can put them kind of like this, and you can tilt them, cut off the excess at the end, but you can make your arrangements, see where you want your trees to be. Kind of like just three of them here, okay? So again, I'm gonna take a piece of cardboard. Again, I use cardboard cereal boxes a lot, 
And I just wanna say, do not waste that glue. Don't put it on your hands. Don't make a mess, okay? <clears throat> so I'm gonna do like a little squiggle line down the middle, not too much glue, okay? Just about like this. And then I'm gonna take this piece of cardboard and I'm gonna run it down like this to kind of smooth out my glue. Okay. You can go in and spread it out a bit. This will help it to dry more evenly. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay down my birch tree here, decide where I wanna put it, press it down, and then I'll move on to my next one, the same thing. Little squiggle line down the middle. And use my piece of cardboard and smooth that out a bit. You'll help it to lay flatter. You won't have real thick glue. You won't have glue oozing out. And I like it kind of tilted, like these are over top of each other. And anything that goes beyond the edge of your painting, you can later take a scissors and kind of trim that. So let's do this last one here. This one is still a little bit wet, so. I'm with the glue, so you don't have to rush as much like you did with the watercolor. Watercolor, sometimes you have to wait for areas, and other times you gotta really rush it. And when you're first putting it down like that, and because we were adding salt to it, and I've tried a number of different things, like the first ones I did, I wetted down the sheet first, um, but I decided it dried quicker if I just put the watercolor down and let it go from there, let it dry on its own. Okay, so now I've got that. The next thing we need to do once we have these down is again, we're gonna use the black temper paint. And I have some water here if I need to wet it down a little bit. And you're gonna use a brush. And it's up to you what kind of brush you feel most comfortable. Some people like real thin brushes. Um, I actually like these kind of brushes a lot. Now, <clears throat> because it's thicker and then gets narrower. So I can make both a very tiny line and a thicker line. So I'm gonna go in here, I can add a little bit of water to this temper, and I'm gonna start making the branches to the tree. So of course, the furthest out is gonna be the tiniest line. As it comes towards the tree, it's gonna get thicker. So tiny little line and thicker. Take your time with this. Make it get thicker as it comes towards your tree. And you have to decide whether your line is actually gonna overlap the other tree. Is this tree gonna go behind? And you gotta keep that consistent. You don't want it to look like it's just all a mess. You want it to look like you're thinking about which tree is in front. So this tree so far is the tree in front. The others are behind it. Okay, And you can go ahead and make branches on the other ones. I do have a finished one here to show you. So put this one aside. And here is one where I did all the branches on it. You can see it doesn't have to be real perfect. And you can see where the salt crystals were and it looks a little bit snowy in the background. You can kind of have fun with that. So let me move some of this out of the way. And let's talk about the bird. I decided you can make whatever bird you want, and I did look online, and I looked for pictures of a cardinal. Uh, maybe you wanna do more than one kind of bird, or maybe you wanna repeat a, a bird design. So I decided to repeat like the cardinal design, and again, I decided to use, wipe this down again, I decided to use um, cardboard from a cereal box and I drew just the general outline of a cardinal and what I can do is I can trace over that on some other paper so that I can repeat my bird 
and I can flip in the other direction and make it look like it's going the other way. Kind of fun to do. And cardinals have that little spike at the top of their head, so they're pretty defining that way. They also have black around their beak, so we can do something with that. All cut out. Okay. So let's move this aside, let that sit there. And I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm actually gonna move some of this out of the way and go to another piece of paper so I have a nice, clean surface to work on. I'm just gonna fold that back. And let's go ahead and trace around my bird. And I like, now I have four birch trees here. I like odd numbers in art. I think it looks more interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and trace this bird three times and cut those. I will later cut them out after I do the watercolor. So here is my first bird. I think my second bird, I'm going to flip it in the other direction so it looks like I didn't totally copy this. And you can, actually, I'll probably give you half the amount of paper to do this because you're not going to need a full sheet or you can split it with your neighbor to make these birds. And you notice I'm not making them too big. They should fit in my scene. So you're thinking perspective and what's gonna look right. So I don't really want a flamingo sized bird in here. I want just a small bird so that it fits in the scene. And I'm not even being that careful about my tracing because they can look all a little different. Okay. So I usually start with my lightest color first when I'm doing watercolor. And my lightest color for the bird <clears throat> would of course be the yellow for the beak or the orangey yellow. So I might go ahead and go and put that orangey yellow as my beak. And again, I'm not being real careful here because when I cut that out, I can change um, how that's gonna work. I might even put some more yellow in there because I don't want it to look too much like the color of the feathers. Of course, this is very red. So let's go ahead and get a bunch of red on here. And I'll start with this bird over here. Again, see, I'm not being real fussy here. It's going along the edges, that's okay. I'm gonna cut this out. You can still see the pencil mark. And you can go in and make some things darker in places. And maybe I'm gonna go in. Again, like I said before, usually I don't use too much black right around here. And I can go back in and make that darker when I need to. Maybe I'll go in here and put some black here, maybe along some of the feathers. I'm not being very careful here. So remember, I can cut this out and make it look like I want it to look in the end. Okay, so I'm gonna stop the video and I'll show you what it's like when it's all put together. Okay, so here is the cardinals that I've left dry. Um, you can see they're not real neat. I let them kind of bleed beyond the line. I let the watercolor bleed. Now I can get like a smaller brush and go in now that it's had a little time to dry and really <clears throat> fine tune these. So I want the beak to be more yellow brown. So I'm gonna take some of my watercolors here and <clears throat> kind of go in and make that beak a little bit more yellow brown. So you can really see that. And remember, I can go in and fine tune it some more um, after it's had a little time to dry. So let's see here, some red. I've got a darker red in this particular watercolor set. So I can go in and make my red along here, kind of fine tune it a bit, maybe around where the, let some of that natural tendency though of the watercolors kind of bleed through in places. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's kind of the fun aspect of it that very carefully cutting this out. 
this is where you want to be a little more perfect with it because you could give, afford to be a little bit sloppy with the watercolors because you were going to cut it out anyway. So this way I can make each one look a little bit different just by how I cut it, how it's going to look, and we can kind of play with where we're going to put it on our scene here. So I'm going to go right here, or am I going to move it here? This is going to be up higher, down lower. You get to play with them almost like puzzle pieces. So now with the magic of video, I'll cut out the rest and we'll finish this off. Okay, so I let this dry overnight and I flipped it upside down with something heavy on top of it to make it nice, fairly flat at this point. I've got my cardinals glued in. They're looking pretty good. I can go in here at this point and add some more darkness to where I need some darkness. And another thing you can do is you can take something sharp and kind of create some feathers and go through some of the places. Like I might want to put a little bit more of a highlight where the bird's eye is. So you can see where that might be. Now, before you even think about it, if you're in my classes, no, you're not getting an X-Acto knife. Um, <laughs> they're very easy to misuse. So no, we're not gonna be doing that. But you could also take an open paper clip or an old pen and do the same kind of thing. So I can go in here and create some textures that way, but just to give you an idea of what can be done to make your piece kind of pop. But that's basically it for doing your um, landscape, and I hope you enjoyed this project.